we have the hot scoops. We have talked to our sources. We've talked to all of the hottest leakers. And we know the Switch 2's first year. We know when it's being announced, when it's coming out, and what software you can look forward to buying on it. Every game. Every, every single game. game for the Switch 2. We have an entire list here. I am Chris Meekness fan. With me today is Kevin the Golden Bolt. Hi, Kevin. Hello. We are here with Moriarty. Hi, Moriarty. Hey. And we're here with our first source for the leak. Nico, all hail buckets. Nico, what has your studio been working on for the Switch 2? It is I. Uh, well, that's a weird well, game. Oh, man. It is I. Is, been... It is the. That's the. This <laughs> is a spin off game for the Switch. I this thought it was a, a, a mix up of well, We Are Bread or whatever it was. Yeah, oh, God. I am bread. That's right. It's I am part bread of, with This Is Us. Right? <laughs> it's part of the Us series, The Last of Us, Among Us, Jordan Peele's Us, <laughs> uh, Netflix's Us, uh, and of course the country, the US of A, Us. Um, this oh, uh, game. Good callback. Yeah. Uh, this game is called. Uh, yeah, it is I. And um, Well, thank you. Well, it's I. We're at the point where it feels like Nintendo could announce this thing any day, especially in the 10 days when this goes up on public feeds. That'd be a little awkward. So we just figured, what the heck? Why not? It's We're going to age poorly uh, anyway, so why not? Yeah, it's been about <laughs> seven years since... Um, actually, seven and a half years since which one came out, hasn't it? It just feels like yeah. it's been a fact of life forever at this point in time. But it's a hot topic, and I, we have talked to our sources. We do know that... Kevin, if you were going to guess, though... When are you when are we gonna announce this thing? So our sources said that if I'm gonna guess, when are they gonna announce this thing? And I said to our sources, I have a feeling that it will be announced uh sometime the week of October. Oh. That's it. It's the that, week of October. It'll be announced right sometime during that week. And okay. they will they will do so my hunch genuinely is that they and this has been my hunch for a while. I mean, I've been on record with this. You guys can vouch for it that they will announce it sometime in fall. Uh, they will go over everything. They will then say, see us in January for more. And they will release it in spring. Maybe not March, but they're essentially going to do a one-to-one -one switch cycle because it makes no sense whatsoever not to do that considering how well that went for them. They had the benefit of releasing with no competition. They had the benefit of releasing with an audience that was rabid for anything good from Nintendo for the first time in years. Uh, I say that as a Wii U owner and lover. Uh, my Wii U uh, left me, though. And so th they they had no competition. They they were able to build out an audience for the first six months until the holiday season. And that meant that they had no stock shortages by the time the holiday season came. And that's the three wins in a row there. So my hunch is I almost feel like it'll be April uh, just because of the way that they do their fiscal quarters. Yeah, so that's that's really where it comes down to, right? Yeah. Is Nintendo's fiscal end year is March, and yeah. it's going to be a question of whether or not they need the the boost for this year or not, right? In order to meet projections, yeah. because if they do, they can put it out in March. But it is a March April question, not like a December question, right? Yeah, like it is absolutely end of March, beginning of April, one or the other. Yeah, I um. And I think honestly, with the the announcement of the Switch Two itself, will be enough to keep investors happy going into the following fiscal year. Uh, they had lowered projections already. Uh, I think they're actually underperforming those projections a little bit as far as Switch sales go. I haven't followed super in depth, but I know that the drop off is a little bigger than people expected because now there's the question of can the Switch itself actually pass the PS Two because it's still like fifteen to. 15-ish million behind by the end of this year. Uh, so the question is how much stock they have left and whether they'll get through all of that or whether they'll do an Apple and say, well, the Switch 2 and the Switch are the same thing, so that way we're the best-selling system of all time. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're going to find out more information before, uh, sadly, this goes live. Uh, I think we're going to mm -hmm. see it in the next couple of days. We're going to get that, that early announcement. Um, and then, yeah, you know, this will come up and people will be like, well, here's what actually happened in the comments. Yeah, we're Turns trying to age poorly. Right. And, and speaking of aging poorly, Chris, what was the first game that you saw from your sources that was revealed? And when is it coming out relative to the Switch's launch? Oh, I was going to devil's advocate and say, wouldn't it be funny if this thing came out in the summer after everyone thought spring the whole time? 
Summer would be weird because nothing they don't put things weird. out in summer for games because people aren't home. It's complete devil's advocate. I think it's spring, but I've also time and time and time again seen people say this is what would make sense for Nintendo to do, and then they do something else that's a little different. True. So I was like, I wonder. True. First game, mm -hmm. I think first party Nintendo software. I have a lot of access. You see, I would expect to see the new Mario Kart at launch. Ooh, 3D Mario okay. Holiday. Okay, see, my, my sources, my sources have told me <laughs> a different thing, that okay. it was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Remastered <laughs> no was coming way. at launch. No uh, way! With all 148 tracks, <laughs> plus... That's evil. That's plus evil. four more tracks. And a roguelite mode. Wow. And a, ro a roguelike track builder <laughs> mode. Dude, uh, oh, Battle Royale, a Battle Royale. <laughs> I, I think we're due for a new Mario Kart. I almost wonder if they'll do it at launch or if they'll wait a couple months because my mm. hunch has been, uh, based on what my sources have told me, that this system is going to launch with Super Mario Iliad. What does that mean? <laughs> it is the sequel That's... to Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I see. Which... which... <laughs> Uh, it's technically that, a prequel, though, of course. So, yeah, you know. it takes place yeah, prequel, before. Prequel. It takes place before it, so we get to see <laughs> New Dong City as it's being before built. the before the destruction, <laughs> thanks to Batman and Superman fighting. Yeah, oh, it's before okay. Superman snapped Zod's neck. Oh my God! You know, I, I'm told about this. <laughs> okay. in, in all seriousness, I do think that that Mario is going to be the Nintendo Switch to you know launch. There's no flagship. chance it's not. But, there's, yeah. there's no chance. Uh, we do have what is a Brotherhood, right? That's going to obviously be at least considered for for Switch Two as well. And I I'm expecting uh, maybe a Mario Kart, but that one's hard because Mario Kart Eight, man, you know, like the, what is the best selling game? <laughs> it's like, it's in like the seventy million range at this point, right? Like you know, of the past several years, I think it's yeah. pretty hard to. to when you say with. Brotherhood, sorry to cut you off. Uh, which game is are you talking about the Mario and Luigi game that's coming out in a few months? Yeah, yeah. So okay. I know Mario and Luigi is going to be coming out in a few months, gotcha. which puts it as a launch title almost, right? Like I think if I it think comes out November, December, which, I could be wrong. Right Next in month, that period yeah. of time, <laughs> we're getting Mario. It's going to clearly be a Switch 2 game as well, I think. Um, and, and, you know, we're going to see Mario being the flagship sort of mascot again. Yeah. You know, Which, it's inevitable that that we don't see some sort of Mario uh, at the beginning of the Switch too. Yeah, I I would be shocked if it's not a 3D Mario game. Yeah. Uh, just with how long it's been since we had a new 3D Mario, like you would have thought that if they were going to release it not on the next system, it would have been out already. Considering mm -hmm. that you don't you don't need seven years usually to make a new Mario game, uh, like you do with Zelda, because Zelda at this point is now. You know, that that open world saga takes a lot of time. Mm, yeah. um, Chris, I know you and I have talked about uh, something, but I want to go to Nico first. Uh, Nico, what have you and I talked about recently as far as Switch leaks go? Uh, well, you know, uh, my sources t tell me that we're going to get Legend of Zelda choke of the domestic. No, wait. That is excuse me. Wait, that is incredibly no, dark. No, 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 no. It was supposed to be the opposite <laughs> oh! of Breath of the Wild. Switch Breath United the families, wild. but Switch Two tears the Breath apart. of the Breath of Choke the Wild. Of the domestic. The opposite <laughs> the of Breath wild. of the Wild. It ties it's a revenge story. Joy Cons, guys. You can't take <laughs> At the end of the system. game. <laughs> At the end of the game, Link is choking out Ganondorf and gets his fingers bitten off. <laughs> oh, it's like The Last of Us Two. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Nico, I have a question that'll guide you somewhere. Happier, maybe. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what Wave Race is? No. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Because that like, um... I was talking to one of your sources, and they told me that Wave Race is also a lock for launch. Okay, okay. That would be is an that, interesting one. Is that like an outrun type of a uh, thing? Well, it's a game where you choke someone, but then you get to go on a, <laughs> a water ski, and you just water ski around and race, and it's, it's a, all happy. It's a jet ski, jet ski kart racer. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, really beloved pretty game cool. from the N64 era. There was a GameCube launch game. It's actually over on my my desk over there, mm -hmm. uh, my table rather. Um, they haven't like brought it back since a, then. Yeah, I feel like we're due for one. I feel like they usually have a weird lower key launch game. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not going to be Punch Out. That'd be too perfect. You know, you don't so think it'd like, be Snipper Clips too? 
Probably not Snipper Clips too. S- Snake Pass too. If only. There's. I mean, we're gonna get things like that, right? Like, there's gonna be a, a lot of games to capitalize. Too. Yeah, something. Um, if I had to, like, I don't know, put out what I'm, I'm willing to bet money on, other Ooh. than like an Odyssey two, uh, maybe a new Animal Crossing somewhere in the first couple of months. Mm-hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, Mario Kart, if they want to, I don't know if they'll do it. Like, <laughs> Mario Kart eight on the Switch two feels weird. It'll be a new one. Like jokes aside, but, it'll be we're we're overdue for a new one. I think that eight deluxe was specifically because eight was the best one they'd ever made. Yeah. And mm. why let that wilter on the Wii U when mm. you could just put it on Switch? Yeah. And, and also then, um, like how I would do you not top be that? unhappy or surprised necessarily if we got a new Donkey Kong. Uh I, I think it's mm. been shown that they care about Donkey Kong again. You know, so that could be something we would see uh other than that i don't know man <laughs> donkey kong was interesting because it was that was one of the consistent rumored things was that there was a 3d donkey kong game coming at some point uh and it would have if this wasn't if 2024 wasn't the absolute punt year that it has been for nintendo and that's not a negative to be clear uh, i think we there's a chance we could have seen that sort of thing then to end the switch with a bang before moving on to the next system but mm. you can look at all of the Switch games from this year. I mean, you have Thousand Year Door remake that's just for fans. Uh, you have the Princess Peach game. That's a game people have requested, but it's going to sell as well as any Switch game does and not much more. The new Zelda very much felt like, well, let's get one more out before the next system comes out. <laughs> uh, not a bad thing either. Still, you know, I haven't started it yet. Um, it's also over there on my desk. But uh I've heard really good things. It's gotten a lot of good scores, but it's also probably the lowest rated Zelda outside of the 3DS uh, Triforce Heroes game in a long time. That's a weird Um, one. I see people say they're playing it, but I haven't seen like an actual opinion from anyone I follow about the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because everyone I follow streams it now, so that's where the opinions are. I've heard good. I've heard it's a good translation of the Breath of the Wild style gameplay to a 2D style. But my my buddy was telling me that it's also very, very easy. The dungeons are pretty much nothing. And Mm. that's a bit of a disappointment. Um, I see. It it does seem to be very easy. Uh, I will say that the the one thing that I've noticed about that game that um, maybe this is too far in the weeds, uh, but it is... There is a combat function where you simply become Link... And I think that's really missing the the entire thing. Um, yeah, that that sounds tracks. weird. It, yeah, right. Like this is the one time where we really got a chance to see kind of new functionality and and uh, a new main character and kind of play with new stuff. And then in the middle of that, they give you the ability to just kind of revert to old. And uh, that was a little disappointing. But otherwise, yeah. you know, what I've seen of the game, uh, very very positive. Yeah. Um. To, to go back to Donkey Kong, I think you're right, because also, speaking of punting, they, they're they releasing Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, yes. if they didn't already. Uh, another weird punt game. Like, this, th- Nintendo has a thing where the final year of their systems usually tend to be pretty underwhelming, because they mm. are holding everything back. Uh, and I understand, right? It uh, makes totally, a lot of sense. Totally. No knock in there. Uh, I will say, speaking of, of punt year-ish games, uh, this was a little before the 2016 punt year that they had. I think Xenoblade X is coming to Switch 2. Uh, Xenoblade, I, it makes perfect sense to me. Immediately, as soon as you say it, yeah. No, it won't be a new game, because 3's just been done, and they're starting to work on a new engine, uh, supposedly, to help. Here's two things. There, I read this the, uh, recently. There's a report that came out that, as part of their 25th anniversary or 20th anniversary celebration, whatever, they were talking about a new engine that they're working on, not just for themselves, but to support other open-world games, i.e. Zelda. Uh, Because they do the worlds for Zelda to to make it very simple. And I don't think they're going to do a new Xenoblade just yet, but X is high on people's requests. I could see like uh, an upgraded remaster of that game coming. Um, I think it needs to happen. It's the only Wii U game left. Mm -hmm. Nico, what were you going to say? I I was going to say, like, before you said that, I was thinking Xenoblade. I was thinking more, I I was going to say, like, along the terms of, like, my sources tell me that, like, Monolith Soft will step in to help finish development on one of these uh, major launch multiple. titles. They, they have two studios at Monolith. Yeah. So my sources okay. at Monolith have told me that they're working on multiple <laughs> Nintendo. 
<laughs> but they're working right. on multiple Nintendo games, uh, yeah. as they always are. They helped on Animal Crossing. They helped on a mm-hmm. game I'm going to mention now that we don't need to talk about much. I think a Splatoon game is going to come at launch. Sure. Um, launch? Because Ooh. not not launch year. I don't uh, think it'll be at launch year. necessarily. Yeah, first it should be at launch. It should be like maybe a month later. But mm-hmm. I... Yeah. There's no way that that's not coming, I think, because Splatoon has become such a powerhouse for them. And it's three just ended support uh, this past month. Their last Splatfest, I believe, was this month. So if that's not the cue that there's another one coming, I don't know what is. Um, I I think we'll also see uh, maybe a slew of the current existing Microsoft games showing up. Uh, We might recall during the whole Mm -hmm. Activision thing, right? Microsoft made a very public agreement to port as many games as they can to Nintendo in order to show that, you know, they're not locking out uh, Sony. So I think we're going to see a whole mess of those show up there. We're going to see the Call of Duties. We're going to see, you know, probably a Hi-Fi Rush and and anything that Microsoft can get their hands on that they can throw minimal budget at and port it over there in order to show good faith to the FTC. Yeah, I... Mm-hmm. I could see with the Switch 2 being probably PS4 level power, if not hopefully a little more. Uh, PS4 Pro, at least. Uh, they were supposed to start bringing Call of Duty over this year. That's, I don't think, happening. But mm-hmm. they, it probably will soon. Um, it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. And what also will be interesting is that my sources tell me that you can join us at patreon.com slash crub for more scoops like this, such as the scoops that Chris and I do where we watch every episode of Pokemon or the scoops where all four of the people on this podcast do when we made the two non Pokemon fans, Nico and Moriarty uh, (laughs) watch the first movie and explain Pokemon to us. It was a lot of fun. Uh, So Mm -hmm. you should check out patreon.com slash club. Give it a look. There's multiple tiers that are a lot of fun and uh, try it for a month. See what happens. If you don't like it. Thanks. Thanks anyway. (laughs) Hot steaming (laughs) scoops. Even all these scoops. Every I guess scoop. it's, um, steaming scoops. it's maybe worth it because I can see in our Twitch chat because we record this uh, live on Twitch. I can see that there are some people who are talking about holding things back and that, you know, 2016 was a bad year and things like that. And uh, maybe this is a good opportunity to be a little educational. Um, when you are a major developer and a, a console platform owner, you are not going to put games out that last year because people don't buy it. And we're seeing that with the Switch now. As soon as they announced the Switch 2, Switch sales dropped off. As soon as you announce, you know, the next Call of Duty, the previous Call of Duty stops selling. As soon as you announce, as soon as you announce, as soon as you announce. It's yeah. a, a well-known thing, right? Like, this is how the industry works. It's part of the reason why game companies are so hesitant to announce anything early, because as soon as they do, the old thing dies. So, um, yeah, you know, yes, this year uh, has been you know, more painful, I suppose, in terms of, of potential profit. But that doesn't mean that it's not been a, you know, a good year. And uh, many of those those projects that you would have seen this year are finished, right? Like they, they've they yeah. been done. Yeah. And, and, and they they're also just sitting there waiting. They would have planned for this to be a punt year. This isn't like Breath of the Wild, where they held that game back for the launch of the new system. That yeah. is 100% what happened. Uh that this isn't that although there is one game that they are holding off for the launch of the next system metroid prime 4 yeah all right that 100 percent. <laughs> and there's another <laughs> one that i'll throw out uh pokemon legends za that Zaza. is there's no chance in my mind that's not a game enhanced for switch 2 at the very least yep. yeah because there Makes have been sense. rumors that the switch 2 had patches in place for games like pokemon uh, scarlet and violet uh that i don't know how you could make them much better but they would run better they would look like ass but they would run like smoother ass a frame rate would be nice for that game yeah uh (laughs) or just less slow down or seeing pokemon before you spawn into them anything like that Uh. um (laughs) i'm trying to think of what else i didn't write anything down here because i am prepared i I did have a bunch of them yeah oh chris Go. Oh, not a new one. I'm just most interested in Animal Crossing because I feel like that's one you get out in the first year. If I'm Nintendo, I'm especially anxious to test out what the actual ceiling of that series is. Because last time yeah. was very much a COVID bump, and I think we'll see higher yeah. numbers this time due to that. But I don't I, think anyone's expecting it to do that again, so I'm sure they're a little like, okay, let's... What's yeah. actually the deal with Animal Crossing? Right? Well, Nintendo started COVID. I mean, that's, that's been reported. 
by my sources. Ah. And oh, that was shoot. to improve Animal Crossing sales. They yeah. killed millions of people. The, the I was same say, sources that told me yes. that we're getting Ghost of Tsushima Switch port. <laughs> God. <laughs> that would probably I, do I well. wouldn't be shocked if you see other games from, like you said, Microsoft. I wouldn't be shocked if there's a couple other PlayStation games that go over, too. It uh, makes sense. A lot of people forget that the Nintendo Switch is an iPhone 5. Yeah. It is not like, oh, it's like, no, it's an iPhone 5. It has the same power as an iPhone 5. It is one of the weakest consoles that you could possibly pick up. You, your actual phone is many, many times more powerful. So yeah. running these games over the last generation has been very difficult for, and that's why so many games, you know, tend to look kind of bad and their first party games are really the ones that do the best. Yeah. So I, there, there's this huge, backlog of potential games that a switch player maybe has never played or has had an interest in but has never picked up and, and so on and all of those things right are going to be able to be ported over into the switch too because it is you know hypothetically a ps4 pro and and speaking of a hypothetical there uh just looking at the the with the playstation thing i mentioned like her, lego horizons coming uh in about a month at the time of this going out to uh to the youtube feed uh join us at youtube.com slash at crub official or the audio feed at crub.org where you can find all of our audio podcasts uh and leave us a nice review uh you can do that you should but you can do it there um i horizon will be out soon on switch and i wouldn't be shocked given that they seem to want to put that on switch that doesn't seem like a lego thing that seems like like that game is being made by a gorilla that's not a lego game mm -hmm. and i wouldn't be shocked if the horizon remaster that's coming mm -hmm. uh couldn't be backported to the switch 2 next year because they seem like they really want to push robot dinosaurs to nintendo fans so uh, we get that weird thing we've seen where um a remaster will come out, but then the non remaster version will come that's out on true. Switch. That, that, that was like a very specific well. thing, but <laughs> like there's some yeah. PS4 games like that that Switch owners, like Moriarty was saying, just never got to play. You Nino Kuni got uh, that's remastered it. That's what I was and then put on Switch. Yep. Yeah. Because right. like yeah. Ghost, Horizon, even like Days Gone, like there's a lot of games PlayStation Days might be just willing gone. to yeah. throw I, out there yeah. that. Oh, and they'll be able an to resell them again for twenty nine ninety nine, right? Which is like that sweet spot for a Switch game. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, here you go. It's out. It's available. It's on, you know, the the store. At, or you can buy it, you know, little whatever at, at uh, GameStop if people still go there. And, and you know, there you go. You've got yeah. an extra 500 games that show up over the next two or three years. It's a question of whether or not we're going to see any third-party support long-term, which is always difficult because as the years go by, Nintendo consoles get significantly harder to compete, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they, they can't... When this camp comes out, it's already going to be a generation behind. That is just a fact. It One is and a half. One and a half. Right. It, like, it's already it's just behind. Yeah. It, there's no way you can compete uh, uh, combat that it will be behind and that means that when <laughs> you know this next generation is also eight years long that's going to be you know 10 years in the past if we get the switch three type of thing so it's, it's something that you really do have to kind of be cognizant about yeah is that if you're buying the switch two, your third party support is going to be in that first two or three years just because how do you put how do you put Unreal 6, which they're talking about now on PC, Unreal Engine 6, how do you put that on a, a PS4 Pro? <laughs> and yeah, so, well, <laughs> you know? I'll throw out so a follow-up. Be be before we jump to you, yeah. Nico, I'll throw out a follow-up thought, because I think that what will help them is that the Switch 2 uh, will be comparable to a Steam Deck. And I think that yes. if they keep their development tools relatively... Uh, safe you know they don't go too wild with their with their uh specs or their tools so that it's easy to port things over mm -hmm. you could see like a street fighter 6 or a tekken 8 you can see the a tekken 8 might already be on switch for all i know you could see them come to switch 2 uh simply as an easy you know quick and dirty port job and i think that that would do them really really well for several years because if you can just scale back the graphic settings and the game works like it does on steam deck that usually works in your in your favor. Nico, yeah. what were you going to say? Yeah. So my question is, you know, if the Switch itself is as powerful as like an iPhone 5, right? What is the thought process behind 
the assumption that the Switch 2 will be as powerful as a PS4 Pro. PS4 we Pro. We mostly know. PS4 Pro came out about eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, we also mostly kind of understand, right, how Nintendo works. Right. Uh, Nintendo tends to, they, they have this concept called uh, lateral thinking with withered technology. It's what they've done since the very beginning of, of their time. And they create their consoles with what's available at the time that they begin, right? Mm -hmm. With the expectation that as they produce them, and it's important to understand that if the Switch 2 is coming out in March, it's already in production today, right? And they are already making pieces and parts of it in order to have the 30 million that they expect to sell, right? They need those in stock. One of the things that Nintendo does is it sells every console at a profit from day one, which is not something that, uh, you know, Sony does or the Xbox does. Um, they sell them at a loss and expect to make money back on licenses and make it back on, on you know, uh, data and all that kind of stuff later on down the road. Nintendo does not. They sell at a profit from day one, which means that anything that they are building has to be a thing that you could buy today for roughly $300 as a manufacturer, right? Mm -hmm. Which puts it at, yeah, PS4 Pro, maybe, maybe like, um, you know, low-end Steam Deck, maybe, you know, somewhere in that kind of realm. What could you buy for $400? Well, you can buy a Steam Deck. Right. I'm glad you jumped I to 400 because I was going to say 400 is probably what I'm anticipating for it, which is well, going to profit put has this... to be built into it. That's what I'm saying. No, $300 yeah, yeah. for them and then... I, right. My hunch would be 400 simply because I don't know how you sell a $300 console when the Switch Pro is or Switch uh, OLED is already 350 still. Like yeah. they haven't dropped the prices at all yet. And that's a sign to me that they're not like those price drops are not going to come until after the holiday so they can milk everything they're worth. But then also we won't get a price for the Switch 2 until January also. That's yep. not that's not they're going to keep that locked up. Um but I it's going to be interesting because, like you said, Nintendo doesn't sell at at a loss pretty much ever. The exception being the GameCube for that first year, because what happened was the PS2 came out a year prior. Uh, by the time the GameCube and Xbox came out the following fall, Sony dropped the price pretty quickly to make them cut into their profits uh, because they said, well, we have a year head start. We're already profitable. We can cut the price to, to you know, 150, not 150, but yeah, it was 150. Yeah. Um, and so that forced both companies to cut their prices to match, because why would you pay for a new console when the year old one that's selling yeah. better is cheaper? Yeah. And it'll put Which them is in also interesting. When, just as a, a random aside, uh, and I'll come right back to you. This is also yeah. when we saw game prices come back down to that $50 price part. Because yeah. before that, you saw games, even in, uh, you know, Turok season uh, in 1995 or 96, selling at $75 more yep. than games do today, right? It was really that period of time when they did that hard, we are going to be competitive now thing mm -hmm. that you saw prices coming down to video games are 50. And then, yep. you know, a few years later, video games are 60. And we stayed in that price point for 15 years. And discs helped with that as well for for reference for anyone who uh, doesn't follow the, the gaming history as much as uh, we nerds do. Uh, because the disc, the, the disc manufacturing costs is what led to a lot of that stuff. Like there was a, a conversation years ago about, how people were people were more fond of banjo kazooie despite croc selling like twice as well and like yes croc did sell better than banjo kazooie they came out around the same time but the difference was that croc was like 20 dollars at launch because it was a ps1 game whereas you can't sell cartridges that are custom made for uh yeah. for cheap but the thing I was going to say about undercutting, that'll be really interesting because Switch 2 games are going to be $70. They already tested that. They're going to be. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting at a $400 price point with $70 games. The PS4, PS5, I'm sorry, is already $400 uh, for the discless model. So mm. I could very much see Sony doing that again and, and undercutting for the sake of trying to cut into that market. Um, I don't know how much more successful it would be this time, but that also helps them with PS5 Pro visibility because then it's, oh, well, the Pro is 800 or whatever it is. And the, is it 700? I don't care. Or the PS5 is 350, you know? Yeah. Uh, so th there's a double pronged, interesting business uh, uh, debacle that could happen at 400 for Nintendo 
But the truth is, almost every Switch owner has a, a PlayStation 4 or 5. Almost every PS5 owner has a PS uh, has a Switch. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah, not competing yeah. anymore, functionally. No, and I don't think they have been. And maybe this is part of the, the you know, disparity between the, uh, the graphical capabilities of them, right? Because I don't look at a Switch as a competitor to a PS5 yeah. at all. I, I just don't. Even it, to a PS4, be. right? You know, that's not what that's for. You buy your Switch because you want to play Kirby, not because you want to play Call of Duty, right? Like, that just doesn't... It's not yeah. how that works. Um, I would say, and and this is something that we have seen that uh, Nintendo so far has been very, very good at, is that they are directly competing with mobile markets, right? Yeah. Like, they view themselves even as competing with a mobile market. It's why they don't put out mobile games very often. is why they were so reticent to put out the early, what was it, Mario Runner games and, and all these things, <laughs> is yeah. because they compete. They view it as like, but then you won't buy the Switch. Yeah. So... How we're going to see that change over the next year is really interesting to me because it's still not going to be as powerful as your phone, right? Uh, in five years, it, like five year phone from now is going to beat the absolute pants off of a Switch 2. But there's going to be a period of time there where the Switch 2 is more powerful than your phone. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. At least for at least the first year or so, for sure. Yeah. I think least. it's going to be really interesting. Nico, you were going to say something a moment ago. I don't think so. I'm going to say something <laughs> a moment now. Yeah, uh, so we we hit on series like Pokemon, because uh, Pokemon Legend ZA is coming out next year. We know that. So it's presumably cross-gen. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. Um, Metroid is absolutely cross-gen. Mario will be an exclusive, almost certainly. Like The, the last Switch game is Mario and Luigi Brothership. Yeah. More or less, I think that's and the that's last probably one that's also on both because it yeah. makes sense, or it'll be enhanced. Uh, yeah. You know, enhanced. for sure, going to be um, a lot of enhancements. You'd think, right? I mean, it'll probably just be like the PS5 and the Xbox Series, where most PS4 games just automatically run better. Yeah, um, or they patch in, you know, a frame rate uh, cap boost or something like that. You know, um, right? There'll be stuff like that. What'll be interesting is. I'm curious a lot of the hardware stuff. None of that really matters for the point of this discussion, but I'm curious how they will get by the the solid state drive era without one because they can't really have a solid state drive easily in a portable system. Uh, that's kind of uh, it is kind of a, uh, an issue. And I was playing the Horizon PS4 game recently. And I said to Chris, man, this game did need the remaster. I know that's controversial, but I don't like watching games load for 40 seconds. And I don't like not having checkpoints when I die and then loading back 30 minutes because I didn't save at the last bonfire. I, I like it in Horizon Forbidden West when I die and I spawn right before the fight and when I spawn instantly. And Tears of the Kingdom, I dealt with the loading uh, because that was you know a consequence of the system. When you're playing a system that is then in the consumer's eye broadly seen as a competitor to a PS5 or an Xbox Series X, will they put up with loading to the same degree? It sounds like it's well, such a minor thing, but well, the thing is, is that I, I think even though we're not going to have SSD or an NVMe, probably not either. There is in the past, you know, year and a half or so, uh, a lot of ex uh, um, improvements we've seen in SD Express, which means micro SD cards of, you know, up to about True. a terabyte. True. So if and those don't get hot, which is really the big thing, right? Like an NVMe gets hot. Yeah. And uh, having an SSD, it takes up a lot of space and it's hot. Um, but they're not going to use, you know, a, a, a plate drive <laughs> that's not going to exist in this so yeah. what do you have well you have the opportunity to to make like a really cheap low-end sort of ssd type thing or right you go very expensive with an mvme they're not going to do either of those what's in the middle micro sd right with the sd express that we've seen coming from from uh, uh samsung and yeah. you know some of the the competitors i think it makes sense and it would give us that space and it would give you the speed Right. It's not yeah. quite at full NVMe, but, you know, that is understandable. That would help. But then they're still designing their games for presumably switch cartridges, but better. So those load onto your hard drive like those install more or less anyway. 
load times aren't as big of a deal on Switch games outside of like a Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Mm. Uh, so it shouldn't necessarily be one, but we're also talking about like the jump from games that are technically 1080p but are closer to 720p to probably 1440 when you're docked, yeah. which is a four times increase in quality. Uh, yeah, four, four times. And that's going to cause that's going to cause more load time issues. And they've always optimized well, but it's an interesting back end thing. I'm curious how they'll handle um, I'm fascinated too. I would not be surprised if when we get that announcement, you see SD Express as a logo in there somewhere, right? And if we do, if you see that logo or, you know, the, mm. the trademark buy or any of that kind of stuff anywhere near there, then I think we're going to be able to see, because that's like 800 megabits a second. It is not bad. Yeah. It's real fast. And, and that will that will work in their favor because the Switch 2, per my sources, will only have a hard drive of like... 200 gigs probably 200 yeah 256 or something um, most likely it makes sense it's yeah. what makes sense which is not mm. good um but you know at the same time tears of the kingdom was only 30 gigs so they can usually get away with it yeah again oh you if you really want to see right if you're sitting there and you're thinking man what could i possibly see in the switch 2 and i really want to figure it out right then go and look at you know the other handhelds like a uh, a Steam Deck in that price range. Go look at a phone that you can find in that price range, right? And say, oh, okay, so this is what's out there. This is what's ab available and something that can be sold profitably, right? Because the, the Steam Deck is also a profitable adventure, yeah. or I mean, you know, not particularly profitable is profitable and phones are necessarily profitable if you're paying full price. So go find a $400 phone, right? And take a look at it and you'll, you'll be able to figure out uh, pretty reasonably what's out there, right? Yeah. What you could do. And, and to, to circle back to the point I had, I had meant to make that I didn't make, uh, we talked about Pokemon. We talked about Metroid. We talked about all those cross gen games. Are there any games that our sources have told us about that we haven't yet mentioned? I, you know, I saw on the Twitch chat, uh, um, I saw Star Fox mentioned a couple times. I'm hoping I haven't had any confirmation from this or of this. I, I'm hoping that uh, Project Giant Robot finally comes out. The game that was supposed to be part of the three game slate that was Star Fox Zero Project Guard, which became Star oh, Fox God. Guard featuring Slippy's Uncle Grippy. There was also Project Giant Robot that Miyamoto was working on. It's the game that I expect to release right after he dies. And the um, Kill Switch. <laughs> it's a dead drop. <laughs> dead man switch. Yeah. And oh, man. I, that was then supposed to move to the uh the Nintendo Labo. And I don't think that one ever did. There's still one of those games left that never came out. And I mm. would really like to see that uh come to Switch 2. If only because it'd be funny. So, Chris, do you have any like F zeros or anything <laughs> that your sources have told you about? I have a big game we have not talked about. In okay, fact, so, you could say it's so one of the I. biggest. Are you I about think, to say? I think one you might say the same thing that I'm thinking. Fortnite, yeah. Are Fortnite we all two? thinking the same thing all here? Right, Nico, Fortnite. on on now, okay. Three. All right. Two. One. Smash. Breath of the Wild Smash seventy dollar remaster with no changes. What? Oh, I said Smash. I oh. also said Smash. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm excited to say that there will be a Breath of the Wild $70 remaster with minimal to no changes and no additional content coming wow. in the first well, half yeah. of the year. Look almost that certainly. One. Almost certainly. Yeah. yeah. Would they? Because that Pulled game's going to be... PlayStation book, baby. I mean, th almost that would be certainly. very that would be very PlayStation of them to do that. I I don't know that that's... Consistent I don't know that I trust that 4K? source. I think that they would just upgrade that because that game's already on... 70% of Switches anyway. Hmm. Well, yeah. I actually, I have a very reliable Horizon. source. Okay. Um, this is somebody that I trust implicitly, and I believe that I would put money on this. Being is his name Nico? An absolutely real 100% <laughs> will launch in the first year. I I've told you not to trust me. Skyrim Remaster. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to oh, make dude, a joke yeah. about Starfield on Switch, but then I felt sad. <laughs> this all this all happens. It would double the double its player base. Yeah. This all happens before we get a, another whiff of GTA Six, though. This all happens oh. before we get another well, whiff yeah, of, of that. Course. GTA Six yeah. isn't GTA Five will come to Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I Smash was an interesting one because I 
I think that Sakurai's YouTube thing has just ended or is going mm. to end imminently, which yeah. would mean ostensibly, if you assume that he hasn't been working in the background on things, that a Smash game would pro. I I don't think it would be launch, because it never mm. historically has been besides Melee, and Melee was kind of a crapshoot because that almost didn't happen. Mm-hmm. I would say that that's more likely a 2025 game because you can't blow your load on everything and if there's a mario kart there's no reason for there to be a smash you mean like smash was 20 smash was 2018 that was the following year um, yeah that's true right that's fair that's fair. and i they also said like because sakurai had been on record saying that he doesn't really want to do a regular smash game again so it's going to be probably different right. and whether that means it's a moba or it's the Concord we all wanted, where it's a uh, hero shooter that's Speaking full of price. which, <laughs> speaking of which, my sources have told me we're going to get Concord on the Switch 2, baby. Free Launched Gunner Edition? Title, free Gunner Edition, Red Guy back in all of his glory. There'll be Red Guy colored Joy-Cons. Oh, red guy shit. colored joy cons same so like more. well so one is just be red though one is red <laughs> and the other is like his blue non skin. Uh, we kind of so- already we kind of already have red guy joy cons it's kind of like the normal switch joy cons i thought yeah, he was gonna almost- say one is red and the other is guy colored <laughs> <laughs> flesh colored switch oh. controllers oh true yeah they're veiny yeah I was right. going to ask Nico what would get Nico to buy a Switch 2, because I feel like the rest of us would just kind of buy one on principle. Ooh, but Nico just gave a... me what would sell me a Switch 2, I'll tell you that. Yeah, honestly, that would sell me a Switch 2. I think a Luigi's <laughs> Mansion 4 oh. might get me to buy a Switch. That'll definitely two. happen. That's These questions games sell when, it'll gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think a Luigi's Mansion 4. I think the new Mario Kart is very attractive to me. Um, Sexy if they even. actually, yeah, I mean, yeah, if they, if they release a new Mario Kart, I would eventually find my way to a switch too. Okay, um, okay. unless I could also buy it on the switch, in which case, no, chance. maybe not right away. There's yeah. already two on switch. Right. Mm. Um, let's see. Oh, a uh, new, uh, Tamadachi life. If they did like oh. a new Tamadachi, li- but not the stupid RPG edition. Like I'm talking legitimately just Tamadachi life, but like updated a little bit, you know? I still feel like they're missing a trick having not already done that in the age of social media and streaming and all this stuff, right? I, I feel like yeah. well, there's a weird I wouldn't lightning count it in out. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't bet a hundred dollars that it won't come out during the lifespan of Switch 2. Do you yeah. think so? If they did if, that, I'd be incredibly uh I'd be very happy with that. I, I don't could, think it's a launch thing, but no, yeah. I could see it coming out because if if there were any time for it to come out on Switch One, it would have been this year. Because when you mentioned Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's Mansion Two Remake was also a game that came out this year on Switch when they were punting. So Ooh, case in point, good. you know they they filled their quota of games that people really wanted that aren't like blockbusters, and Pomodachi Life would have been one of those for this sort of year. So yeah. a down year would definitely have. Well, well, last year we got Pikmin, right? Like they've been doing a pretty good job of going down yeah. the the All like list. wish list. Yeah, uh, Pikmin is weird too because Pikmin was in development for like ten years and done mm-hmm. for like five. Yeah, supposedly. yeah, that's fair. But yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't it be wild to think that there's a Tamadachi Life just sitting there? It's already <laughs> yeah. finished, totally playable. Twelve been Switch, done for four years. Twelve they Switch almost, Three launch game. They, Ooh, almost, there you yeah, go. yeah. They almost certainly just have a Tomodachi Life game just sitting there. Supposedly almost there's certainly. been a Fire Emblem remake sitting around for like a year or two now. So Nintendo's yeah. weird like that, right? Yeah. Like they will hold on to a game for a decade. And the thing is, is that, you know, because of the way that they make their, their games and their consoles, uh, they tend to hold up pretty well, regardless mm-hmm. of when they're launched. Yeah. 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 I can see Fire Emblem first year for sure. Sorry, Chris. We do have an insider uh, chiming in in chat. Um, Erkman one, I believe, is their alias. Saying Bloodborne finally gets ported, but it's to the Switch two. <laughs> I can say I've heard the same thing. <laughs> but it's actually God. like lower res and it runs worse. Oh it's, it's, man, it's the Bloodborne remake on yeah. Switch two. That'd be, that'd <laughs> the be PS1 so DMake. funny. The PS oh. PSX. It, so here, here's an interesting question. Okay. With the Wii U era, we got Splatoon. Mm-hmm. I'm currently struggling to think of. Oh, well, we had Arms for the Switch. 
uh, <laughs> arms what, too. <laughs> arms too could happen. What? <laughs> there's going to be a new IP somewhere, probably in yeah. the first year. What do we think it is? Pal World. Now that they'll own it, <laughs> I could see that. I could see them them bringing that whole studio on and saying, "Hey, you guys make Pokemon a lot faster than Pokemon does." <laughs> I'm just. Uh... <laughs> I think it's going to be a character called Dumpy Gumpy. Um, and he's just like a piece of slime, like not a, um, you so know. So he's the anti Kirby? So well, no, no. He just kind of. Does he just blow? Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, yeah. He blows. Right. He blows. <laughs> he and just gets uh, smaller as you play. And so you start as a big one, and then at the end, he's right. half as big. If, right. if that game's not called Blowy's Adventure, what are we doing here? Blowy's Adventure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Blowy's Adventure, uh. and you're going to like. It's going to be a MOBA, and you're going to be. Uh, you have blowing powers like one off. Um, Concord oh, one veterans will get Concord. that one. Right. And um, that's the original IP. That's gonna be it's gonna be a hit. People are I'm gonna excited. love it. I'm excited for Blowy's Adventure too. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking because like both of those games, they weren't entirely dependent on the console gimmick. But Splatoon was like you're looking at the second screen. Arms was using the Joy Cons. All we really heard is that this might have magnetic attached Joy Cons. I don't know if you could incorporate that into a game somehow, but maybe that's oh, dude, uh, an indication. Uh, Newton Balls simulator. <laughs> I hope you can Newton hold balls. the magnetic controllers to the screen and make it do that thing where the screen gets all <laughs> yeah discolored. Yeah. The so Chris yeah. Newton Balls Newton Balls are like the desk toy where you like drag a ball up and you swing it and it oh. pendulums and like hits the other one. And they just go. What if they it, make right? a game that 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 that's that bird? It's the water. That's the bird water dipper. And that's oh, the whole game. True. That'd yeah, be a hell of a clicker cool. game. I'm going to say it. Someone yeah, should do that. Cool. Yeah. Eighty dollars. It's the first yeah. game that's premium. See, um, you, you mentioned the magnet thing, and that'd be a cool like horror game or like Ace Attorney, Professor Layton kind of gimmick, right? Like you gotta mm. magnetize the screen or something, and it affects, oh, and you can like yeah. see something you couldn't see otherwise, something like that, right? That'd be a good throwback to those old uh, Dunkier Takeshi's Challenge manual in water or whatever it was. Yeah. Was it that yeah. or was that yeah. um, was that what game was that? Was that that one? I believe you was, on principle. Was the that manual made of like sugar paper? There was like a specific. If it wasn't <laughs> and it that, just it was dissolves uh, when you put what's it in the, the water. What's the Zelda like that everyone really loved on the NES? Oh, uh, you know the on one NES? Um, on the maybe Super Nintendo. It's shoot. It's the game that every YouTuber is like. That game's really cool. I'm excited to play it. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a lot. I thought you were saying tunic for a second. Uh, no, Earthbound not tunic. There's, there's. Ah, uh, shoot. I'm gonna look it up. Hold on. Oh man, I love the idea of you dunk this booklet in water. Except in my version, the booklet is made of sugar paper Star and it dissolves. It's Star Tropics. Tropics. Oh. End of Star Tropics had uh, a thing where you had to dunk in the manual in water. I think. That's, wow. That yes, I remember that. Star Tropics. Yeah. What a wild game. Mm. not one very hard i don't know why people like it so much the music's cool really hard <laughs> that was uh, one never. of those nintendo hard sorts of games for sure um i'm excited to play it for the first time and yeah, I've never <laughs> once seen anyone who's actually played that game <laughs> so so real. speaking of all those nintendo youtubers i think we should probably end this part of the discussion by theorizing how the the internet response or the internet creator response to the Switch 2 is going to be. Because we oh know people God. are going to cry on camera the moment it's shown off. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. We know that like people are going to yeah. hype it up. But how yeah. quickly do you think there's the, the, uh, the clickbait backlash? Dude, mm. Im immediately. Day, day Z, like within, but, within but those people, I'd say... 10 minutes. I'd those say will be minutes. the people that are doing it simply to try and like, those are, those are like negative clickbait. I'm talking like the, Oh, you mean like the, like switch like, two the, is not the, as bad as you think. Retrospective the disappointed switch tubers that are trying to garner. This should have been great, but yeah. it won't be. Oh yeah. Oh, concerns, they should have done so much better. Trolling. Okay. Oh yeah. The, so how it, long until we've got somebody's face, okay? Their face looking sad in the thumbnail, all right? And next to them 
Is it or couldn't it be better? Can can puppets look sad on camera? <laughs> we waited could this be long better? for this. <laughs> we could get the sad Arlo. I wasn't saying anybody specific. <laughs> I'll say it. Sad yeah. Arlo. Yeah. Oh, um, sad, I think it comes. Okay. If they show the new Mario and Mario looks weird in a way we're not used to, that comes Ooh, day Unreal one. Engine Nintendo make this hire this man, Mario. Yeah, like if they make mm. them too smooth or too rugged, like in either direction on that scale. Yeah. Uh, battery life for the system, that could come True. a week later True. and be like, it's only three hours. It'll be something mm. like that. I mm-hmm. think it comes within. I a remember week. that happened with the original Switch. Everybody and was the like, Wii U. Oh, it's, oh did it? it's not going to yeah. last. How's it going to last? <laughs> yeah, that was that was a genuine thing. I I, I oh. still see people do that with um with the the upgraded Dual Senses where they're like, yeah, my controller dies within two hours, and I'm like, I play for like eight. How? What are you doing? <laughs> like, like my my old my like old dual sense would die in like the dual shocks died but the dual sense has never struggled for me yeah my dual sense was pretty bad I, my favorite the, the concord was, one lasts forever well that's, that's the, the that's the new model concord too. baby yeah. my favorite is the wii u uh had was it the wii u or the 3ds that had a battery pack that was half the size of what it could have been but they saved money on it by making it a, a shittier battery that I think was, that was the, the wii u. Pad. yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be really exciting to play on the Wii U when those game pads start dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yep. classic. I, um, yeah. I like, there's going to be some sort of concern trolling for the record. Arlo is a friend of the channel. Uh, so d- don't, don't send this to him. Send it to him. Actually, I'll send it to him. I'm going to. And th- there's going to be some concern trolling, not from like an Arlo type, but like there'll be some of those Nintendo clickbait YouTubers that'll do it. And it's going to be, I'm curious what'll be what does it and how quickly it'll happen and what the backlash will be like if there's anything that's remotely off. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I suspect it'll be, as with a lot of these, entirely dependent on the games that they announce at the first time. And price. Right? Like, and price. Like, well, yeah, if it's $500, people are going to have a major problem yeah. with that. Yeah. I don't think it will be. And even at three ninety nine, people are going to compare it to uh, to a PS five, right? Yeah, they're going to make the well. You could just get a PlayStation. And yeah, uh, they're not really comparable in that way. <laughs> they're um, in the good. They're in the good narrative era currently, though. So I yeah. like when you're when you're hot, you can do no wrong as a product. And Nintendo mm-hmm. is hot, so they cannot do wrong. And yeah. so I I'm curious because I said this recently. Um, I think on one of the podcasts. Uh, in light of the PS5 Pro stuff, my thought was, man, if Nintendo fumbles the bag at all, what are all these people going to do? Because that's the only bastion of hope they have left. Uh, like, I, I, I'm, I'm curious. Like, at at which point does the goodwill? Mm-hmm. Would the goodwill run out? I don't think it will. But when will people start trying to pretend that it's running out? Um, a lot more if depressed they go- Switch tubers then. I hope if so. they go way too far, if every leak that we've heard uh, RE hardware is wrong, mm-hmm. right? If that's not accurate, if it's not just an upgraded switch and it's something very, very different, I could see that being something where, where people didn't take it, you know, well. Yeah. Because um, yeah. really, right? Like, what do people want with a switch too? They want the switch, but not, you know, an iPhone 5. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's all they want. And so if it were very, very different, if they did something like they did with the Wii U, where it was, you know, some multi thing, I I, I don't know. I could see how they could lose um, some goodwill there. But really, Nintendo needs to make bad games to lose it, right? Like, that's what they need to do if they want to to become Sony right now. Yes, they just need to make bad games. And they haven't been doing that. They are remarkably high quality for a long time now <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna either cause you some more clickbait backlash or save you some are, are you saying that sony games are bad <gasps> yes okay there we go let's go <laughs> i've determined Hello, what could do well. it based on that show the console looks too similar to the switch only shows one or two games for a few seconds like that one switch trailer doesn't give a date for when they're going to show more for the console even if it's mm-hmm. only a month later and they don't say it Mm-hmm. That is their golden combo for pissing everyone off on accident. Oh, and give a price that's too high. And give a price that's too high. We saw the yeah. blueprint with the PS5 Pro. Graph that onto the Switch 2, which doesn't feel like an impossible scenario, just in terms of the things I said. 
Yeah. Yeah. And also in that case, everyone shut up as soon as they showed a gray version of the PS5 Pro. Everyone was just happy again for some reason. I hate the internet. <laughs> it there's no reason <laughs> it to like good. the PS5. Don't get me wrong, there's, but there's no reason to like the PS5 Pro. <laughs> There's no reason to end the world over the PS5 Pro. People were just Jesus complaining Christ. for a week, and then they're like, well, here's the 30th anniversary it's, edition. It's and got colored buttons again. Oh, my God. And just zip. Everyone shut it, up about so the PS5 stupid. Pro. It was hilarious I, to me. That is, that, that's, that's, funny. that's a good one. That's a good four hit combo. I was going to add something to that, yeah. but I forget what it was now. Hmm. Uh, oh, no. Zelda, yeah. they make Link look too much like a girl. The only game they oh, show off is add a add a girl. The only game they show off is Pikmin. <laughs> Pikmin five. Well, that <laughs> and that's awesome. the one that they've been but... working on for ten years. They started five before four. There you go. Oh, or, if they, <laughs> or if they <laughs> do, or if they do call an audible and like announce like a 2026 release date or something. There's no. They already Ooh. said it's coming out next year. They can't do that. They, they would, already. They like already. people would get fired That's this response saying, is why yeah. that would make them so angry people That's would be like, but it's supposed you're, to be 2025 right. yeah, exactly. you are correct exactly. but there's no world where that happens <laughs> i just got you guys so mad no i'm just kidding like, i'm kidding <laughs> like they they would literally be sued by their investors at that point because yeah, they straight yeah. up said yeah, it's coming out next fiscal this. year. Like, oh, I love that. I, that's that's deep. Honestly, the only question on date really is just whether or not you know they look at uh, their their quarter four and <laughs> it does really well or if it does really badly. That's yeah. It. Like if gonna, it does badly, it comes out in March. If that does really well, it comes out in April. They're going to drag it out as far as they possibly can without revealing any real info about it. So I think you're not too wrong, Chris, in that I think that that will be something closer to what the original reveal is. Because the Switch reveal was just Breath of the Wild with the Switch. Mm-hmm. And and the... Yeah, and, and the noise. And yeah. so they, they then said, see you in January, because they were trying to stall out as much as possible to not lower any Wii U sales before yeah. that happened. And they will do that again because they are a shrewd company. And I mean that as a compliment as far as their their you know their business acumen goes in the last decade. Because January um, was when you got the video showing like Mario Kart in the car and like the rooftop stuff, right? And Odyssey and, and yep. Odyssey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was when they revealed everything. Uh, followed yeah. by, and this is my final question I can think of: What's the over under on Imagine Dragons songs used <laughs> in the first three Ooh. Switch Two reveal items? Oh. So oh, like, that's a lot. There's, Dude. there's yeah, the October that's... reveal. There's the January trailer or whatever it is. Then there's like the the pre release. Whatever the Mario probably. Okay, there's. A, I'm going I to say there are two. 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 That's there that's two what songs. I was also gonna say. I think um because you get one for that initial reveal, that same one again for the January like further information, and then okay. you get another one as soon as they um materialize anything. So that's three. That was three, Nico. No, no, it was no, two. I said one's two. the same. Song. I said two. Yeah. One's the same song. Yeah, ah, they, they okay. reuse I'm saying that yeah. we he, he, like twice period because they, they can't do believer again twice. they already did believer what if they announce a Pokemon Gen 5 remake along with Pokemon Legend ZA and mm. they play that thunder song yeah thunder with uh, oh, thunder with happen. one of the electric Pokemon like with with thunderous yeah thunder God, yeah thunderous <laughs> and there's a new form there's there's a mega the thunderous thunder. but only yeah. I have a good future bad future bad future is we do get imagine dragons it's in that January video Good future, it's hot to go, showing how it's portable again. Oh, and that's that it. Means... And it was hip and awesome. Well, okay, yeah. but I will say the industry right now is like kind of wrongfully mad at Chapel Roan. I don't want to say wrongfully, but like the industry is pretty mad at Chapel Roan at the moment. So it's not looking but with Nintendo likely. Care. But Nintendo's like but two it, years behind, though. That's fair. That's true. That's fair. It they would played be Imagine great... Dragons in 2017. Remember when they stopped <laughs> being cool? If you're two years behind. Do you remember when they you're... stopped being cool? Right, <laughs> it's right, right. 2015. Yeah. <laughs> if you're two years behind, you are 18 months before Chapel Run. So. Oh, true. Yeah, right. What if they play yeah. Drake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What if they play Drake? I mean, you know, if you're trying to appeal to kids. <laughs> wow. Because um, that would be criminal. before... That'd be before all of <laughs> all of this year happened. That's absolutely demonic. Oh my Star- god. They play started from the bottom. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. 
Wow. Oh, oh, yes, during a Donkey Kong remake where you have to climb up the thing Ooh. again. Yeah, started from Ooh. the bottom, now we're here. And then Donkey Kong would be Donkey rad. Kong. That feels like it would happen. Yeah. Oh, dude, if they if they ported uh, Donkey Konga to the Switch too, like new bongos as like the yeah. only new controller variants for the system for the first I, year. I like so when you I still, said you magnetically attach them and slap your Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When okay. I joked, when I joked about uh, Ghost of Tsushima earlier, I thought about saying Guitar Hero Three port to Nintendo Switch, but honestly, a new Jungle Beat would be super sick, or new Donkey I'm Konga surprised that Activision and Microsoft didn't try to announce anything Guitar hero -y to try and get goodwill. Yeah, like a well, rhythm game or something. I, I know mean, Harmonix is there, but... Do you want to compete directly with Fortnite at that point? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, true, they That's do have fair. that. I I'm thinking like with peripherals and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, Fortnite I mean, has a peripheral Fortnite now. Fortnite does it yeah. too, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. I need to buy that, actually. I, point. Fortnite 2 is coming to Switch. Yo, I would not be surprised if Fortnite shows up on on the Switch, but it has to have its own store. Remember, like that's it's, their whole it, thing. It, it oh, is true. on the Switch. It is already on the Switch. Yeah, but does it have its own store? Right? No. Like that's something that they've recently. It has to have its own store. Or so like it we'll has see. it has a store, but like it's not like um, it has an in-game store. Like it you, doesn't have. A, I'll give you a new over under because the one just came to mind. What's the yeah. over under on the storefront being absolute dog shit? Hundred percent, no doubt in my mind. <laughs> Are we talking like user experience or content on the store? Because if the latter, yes. hundred <laughs> percent, yes, <laughs> both. Because like, the user experience is still awful on that thing, and it's, like yeah. it's gone like, slower no, lately. No console has good user experience anymore. Like the PS5, yeah. the PS5's little hub thing is cute, I guess, but like their storefront is full of AI generated dog shit. Yeah, well, I mean, I, yeah. that definitely the much bigger point for sure. But like you and I have run into this lately where you go to the PlayStation Plus thing and it shows the game catalogs, <laughs> yeah. right? For the classic yeah. catalog. And you're like, oh, I want to see the classic games. You click through and you only get the one game it's displaying on the tile. It goes to that yeah. page. Yeah. Very confusing. I don't understand it. it. Here it's frustrating. Oh, yeah. proper Nintendo Switch $50 online version minimum. Mm. I'll just up the price entirely. Like by, but by default, if you want to play Splatoon online, you have to pay fifty now. I could see. Them oh yeah, the price. that would uh, that would go on the Mount Rushmore. It, it of, includes uh, all of here. Here it is. Here it is. It includes all of what currently exists, and then there's a twenty dollar bump for GameCube games. Yeah. Mm. Yep. This That's feels yeah. real That'll enough happen. to where I could see it. That sounds real. Happen. That sounds real. Yeah. And the thing is, is that's also kind of appealing. <laughs> <laughs> right, like I'd pay twenty dollars for GameCube. That well, is it'd be seventy, sour it'd be 70 that. for GameCube. Yeah, oh, seventy. I, think I would too. Actually. That's what makes it feel real. That's the gut punch, but that's also the little Nintendo cherry on top. Where yeah. you'd be like, ah, fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'll be honest, NSO is what makes me play Switch. Right, like I have no interest in most of their releases because mm -hmm. I have a PC. Mm -hmm. But NSO, yeah. That's that's a very compelling reason for me to pick something up. They do. So people were upset with that at first. That was the right decision, both from a business standpoint and from a nobody buys virtual console game standpoint. Yep. Um, I really like I, I really like what both they have done and what Sony has done in the same period now with their PS1, PS2, PSP stuff, because pretty much every NES game you want is already there. Pretty much every PS1 game worth having that is owned by Sony is on the PS1 store. Like, we're in a good era for uh, retro game availability on modern consoles, mm -hmm. which I'm actually genuinely like I enjoy. And I yeah. I also give credit. Like, I think Nintendo should still let you buy those games at this point. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's no reason not to. Like, Sony, Sony actually does, which is weird because they usually would. But they changed mm -hmm. their store when they fixed the uh, gamer tag stuff. So... Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think $70 for GameCube and then they later add Wii because Wii controls yeah. are easy to transfer over as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. That's also the end of needing anything, right? Like mm -hmm. you give me Wii and GameCube and SNES and NES and Game Boy Advance, right? Like that makes it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pay you your hundred dollars a year at that. There point. are four Wii U games left and one of them is devil's third. So that, that was, that's not going to happen. One of them is Xenoblade X, which I think is coming to the system for sure. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know, man. Itagaki Studios just rebranded. Devil's Third remastered. Could be on the way. My sources Devil's tell me. Devil's Third. True. Devil's I, Third. That's true. I forgot that was him. No way. There's no <laughs> way I? it's called Because that was the reporting There's yesterday. No it was like, oh, his studio shut down. Then he went to Facebook. It's like, that's right. We're back. And we changed our name. Like, okay, Itagaki. Yeah, it was literally on, like they just on. they changed the name from Itagaki Games to Itagaki Studio. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. That's all yeah, it was. Like, he saw three forty three rebrand. He's like, I got to get in on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got mad when I saw that that was a rebrand and not just a new studio. Because for for a That's second, fair. not that I had any hope, I saw Halo and I didn't have hope from the start, oh. but. Then I saw Halo Studios and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe they're just trying to drop the 343 brass entirely from the process. And then it's just 343. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. When I've read, a lot of the management is gone, but I didn't actually poke into they it if already, that's true or not. They had already been gone before Infinite, kind uh-huh. of, at that point, because they all left uh, because Infinite was such a disaster, you know? Mm. Halo Master Chief Collection will come to Switch 2. <laughs> from our Patreon, Ooh. Patreon question of the week from Thank Chef Kila. With the recent Transformers 1 film being a great film, but having a terrible marketing campaign, what other game or movie had a bad marketing campaign, but the product itself was really good? The Borderlands Pacific movie. Rim. God. <laughs> Borderlands movie was not good. <laughs> Borderlands Concord. movie. Okay, I'll say so, it. God. So yeah, here's Concord. my... Here's my I think question. Concord's a good answer, actually. P- Pacific Concord's Rim probably, is mine. Honestly, there. Like, they're... they're yeah. My, I guess my question is, I've seen this take with Transformers. Was it really, like, are we blaming the marketing, or are we getting to the point of acknowledging that animated movies do worse? Oh, that's a hot take. Because, like, think- uh, like, Spider-Man had good marketing, the first one, and it took, I think it got, what, $300 million? Like, it got nothing close to the live-action Spider-Man, because people see, because weird adults see cartoon, and they think, oh, I don't care about that. Yeah, no, that does happen. I know quite a lot of people in my life, um, and I love family films. I, I love, you know, animated films. I watch them um, more than, you know, regular movies, probably. Yeah. Uh, if there's like, oh, the new animated film from Pixar, oh, that, that immediately gets my interest. And if you say the newest, you know, Paramount movie. <laughs> uh, I, like, so, I like yeah. that tier comparison. <laughs> Pixar, <laughs> Paramount. Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, if you show me that, I know that I'm going to want to watch it. And I know there are a lot of people who are the exact opposite. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, an animated film. Yeah, I have no interest. I'm not going to watch it. Even yeah. though it could be great. You okay, know, I mean, yeah. the new uh, Puss in Boots is incredible. And yet many people will not give that a shot. So that is sort of where legacy. I... Uh, that is sort it. of where I lie. I'm sorry. I um, I think, like, I just took a look at that Transformers movie and it's like... I had that reaction. I had the reaction of just like, <laughs> I don't really need, this is probably not for me. They had a bad um, trailer for sure. Yeah. Like, where, okay. You know, the trailer they might, might be love. like both yeah. in this, but, but I, it also definitely had a bad trailer because okay. I remember I had to watch it and I was like, all right. <laughs> but I saw the trailers back in the day for the live action Transformers and those movies still to this day are for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. I, yeah. If, if the trailer was bad, that makes more sense because I had seen some of this discourse online, and then, like, like I said, my first thought was Spider Verse, where the first, like, the first movie, I don't even think was really that profitable uh, after you factor in uh, mm. marketing and everything, and they marketed that movie to hell and back, and it made three hundred, four hundred million dollars. Like Transformers, I, I looked up before this because I saw this was the question. It made a uh, hundred million, give or take. So it did not do well. But I think yeah. that's just a consequence of it being an, uh, a full budget in theaters animated Transformers movie when those used to be straight to DVD. Which Not to speak of the quality kind of, of the movie. Too. But, that's yeah. true, actually. <laughs> if this were more like a Spider Verse type movie, then I'd be a lot more interested, especially if it were marketed as such. Well, that's not even my, my point, is more that Spider Verse did a fraction of what the bad, uh, amazing Spider Man movies did. Right, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, because people just don't like animated. They just won't watch them. They think they're for kids. Like, um, like there, there is an audience that has grown onto animated stuff, mainly, honestly, because of anime, as far as adults right. go. That right. audience has grown over time, but that's not, like, that's also why you then see this take, I think, because those sorts of folks 
see an animated movie that looks really good and they enjoy it and then it doesn't do what they expect and the things they like have to be successful so they get upset yeah. and they blame management <laughs> instead of yeah. just it's a movie that's not going to do that well i'm i'm assuming yeah. the budget of that movie was probably recouped because they yeah, probably didn't it market like it well million. so they probably oh, yeah, they broke even likely. just about yeah yeah, yeah this that's is right. also why like adult animation films are so hard to sell mm-hmm. because you are losing the main audience that you're going to get from that. Uh, I do have a, a couple of options for the question here. They're very quickly. Mm-hmm. One yeah. is uh, Earthbound, which is like the retro example of this. The marketing mm-hmm. was terrible for that game, and it sold like 250,000 copies mm-hmm. until 2008 or whenever it showed up on the Wii, uh, the Wii Virtual Console. So, like, that was a, a game where marketing really hurt a you know a good game. Um, and then, of course, Prey 2017, which mm-hmm. uh, got horrific backlash from the name change, right? Like um, being made a Prey game when it very much wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that game is maybe the best Imsim ever made, right? Like, it's incredible. It's really, really good, and people won't give it a shot. I, I That's what I hear about it. I will say about Earthbound, one of the things that I remember reading in a, in a, a, one of the gaming history books that's like relatively, you know, reputable of the few that exist. Mm -hmm. I remember reading pushback on Earthbound, not the marketing, marketing was dog shit in the US, but I remember reading pushback on the idea that the marketing hurt the game because it did sell out. It was just that Nintendo of America chose not to print many copies of the game, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a, it's a, that's a different issue than than the marketing being bad because they sold through everything, you know, just about. It's just that they 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 let it die, which is more of a travesty than bad marketing, in my opinion. I just mm. it's one of those things where I think that uh, I know that's another one of those YouTuber games, and I think that a lot of YouTuber backstory of the game has retconned what appears to have happened. You know, and understandably so, because the like for reference, Nico, the marketing of Earthbound included a magazine with a scratch and sniff that said this game stinks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then the thing smelled so bad, right? The scratch and sniff smelled so bad and they put it into the Nintendo Power magazines and the Nintendo Power magazines then went into mailboxes. Right. And they sat mailboxes for hours in the sun and people opened up their uh, mailboxes to the smell of disgusting rotten eggs that had destroyed all of their mail because all of it smelled like that and apparently it was so strong you couldn't bring it in your house. We should do That's- that for Crub postcards to get people to join us on Patreon Ooh. at patreon.com slash Crub where you can ask questions just like Chef Kilo's today. God, that's yes. gross. That's disgusting. Yeah. Like that, that was a travesty. I just, I also... Th- I, if I remember correctly, Nintendo had the other, like, it was the issue that every one of the companies like Sega, Nintendo, Sony, all had where each of the three regions were independent of each other. Yeah. And so whatever, right. whoever was in charge chose to do in that region was what happened. Like Sony specifically not wanting any 2D games on the PlayStation because that's what the Sega Saturn did. So there were like 2D games that got good reviews that were meant for the US made in Japan that didn't come out here. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Right. The way American gamers in the 2000s set the culture and history of this medium probably needs to be studied at some point quite thoroughly. It's really fascinating because, like, I think that that conversation has gotten muddied because it involves talking about journalism in video games. And we all know where that goes. (laughs) Uh, But, like, there really is a fascinating thing about, like, it's the same way that early YouTube was pushed predominantly towards Nintendo by way of people that were in their, you know, childhood years during the Nintendo NES days that happened to be in their mid twenties, early thirties, when YouTube became a thing. So early games, video media became those people talking about the things they liked. So you then led to this sort of thing that people think that Banjo Kazooie was this iconic game and not many people actually played it. It is iconic, but that's because I like Nintendo stuff and I was, it was in my sphere. But like, if you go to Europe and talk to to people from Europe about N64 games, unless they watch a lot of YouTube, they have no idea what the hell you're talking about because 
like Nintendo never did well in Europe. And that's why mm. Sony slid right in when Sega kind of fell apart and just mm. took everything by storm. Crazy. Yeah. Well, so. speaking of taking things by storm, I believe we've taken things by storm today with this podcast. You're damn right we did. Uh, we still don't it, have an outro. 